All right, so the Eagles obviously had an extremely eventful offseason as they added many new and exciting pieces to the team, and one of those pieces in particular has the potential to completely transform the offense and take it to the next level. So with the offseason continuing to unfold, it seems more and more like adding him and his elite skill set to the Birds' already extremely talented offense could make them almost unstoppable. So let's break it all down. Meanwhile, it also seems like Jalen Hurts could be on the verge of taking the next step and improving in 2024, which would only make the offense scarier. While Vic Fangio just made some interesting comments about the Eagles' defense, and CJ Gardner-Johnson seems to have returned to the Eagles more mature and with a completely new perspective. So let's talk about that and all the other latest Eagles news, and we won't waste any time. Let's get straight into it. So let's start off by looking at some more content coming out of Eagles Hype Day, as over the past week or so, the Birds' social media team has been releasing videos and other content from the yearly shoot, and most recently, they posted a ton of different photos that yes, even though they don't show us anything, they're still pretty cool and exciting. As we got photos of Jalen Hurts, along with Lane Johnson, the rookie Quinn Mitchell, the young star defensive tackle Jalen Carter, Brandon Graham, Dallas Goddard, Devontae Smith, the rookie Jeremiah Trotter Jr., and my favorite here, Saquon Barkley. As not only is it just so cool every time I see something new of Barkley wearing an Eagles uniform, because it just feels so surreal that he's actually an Eagle, but you can also see the Eagles' new word mark here on the jersey pretty clearly, and I must admit, I actually think it looks pretty good. But what do you guys think about the new word mark on the jersey? Moving on from that though, one video we got a bit earlier from Eagles Type Day showcased CJ Gardner-Johnson, and he's someone who I actually do want to talk about a bit here, as it seems like since coming back to the Eagles, he has matured a lot. As a recent article written by Ed Kratz of Eagles Today on SI, he outlined how CJ seems to have a new and better perspective since returning, referencing back to his press conference from right after he signed his contract back in March, where he detailed that his injury from last season actually helped him gain a whole new perspective. I learned myself. I figured out, you know, ball isn't always about you. It's about 50 other guys out there, the front office. So getting hurt and taking a step back and not being the focal point, they realize I'm part of something better and greater. I'm gonna be a part of something greater and better than the one I'm at, if that makes sense. I'm gonna be able to take that next step. Every year you have to mature. Like, I don't think you can be too mature for this game. So I think every year you learn and your maturity just grows. 1% better every day or 1% every year. So I think right now for me is just understanding why am I here? And that's not questioning the coach. It's just like understanding my role. What can I do to impact and some, help the young guys? Really, this team young. Got a lot of ball in us. So I'm ready to take some of this material level and pass it on to some of the guys now that's below me. So I love that from CJ because it really does sound like he's going to be completely bought into whatever the coaches ask of him. And from the way that he's talking, it at least sounds to me like CJ kind of may have some leadership qualities and an ability to impact the team positively in that way. And maybe that's something that he's getting ready to embrace and lean into this season, which would just be fantastic because of all the young guys the birds have in the secondary, but also because the Eagles really miss CJ's energy and attitude and toughness in the secondary and on defense last year. And if he can help instill that into some of his teammates, that would be incredible. So overall, I'm glad to hear that CJ is maturing, and I just cannot wait to watch him this year. But now, looking at someone else who I just don't think we'll actually get to watch in an Eagles uniform this year, we look at James Bradbury, whose status and future with the Birds is still up in the air. And while he is still currently on the roster, all those rumors that he could be cut or traded are still definitely there. And recently, we've got a couple different articles and some speculation linking him to a couple other teams as a potential trade candidate. With the first team being the Atlanta Falcons, as Derek Klassen on Bleacher Report wrote an article in which he listed Bradbury as a potential fit alongside AJ. Terrell, along with a few other guys, saying, quote, AJ Terrell needs some help. Despite being one of the brightest young cornerbacks in the game, his impact can often feel muted because teams can just throw away from him. That's been true for most of his time in Atlanta. The Falcons are going to need someone bigger and better if they want to be a serious defense, though. They at least need someone who can provide better competition for Phillips than the likes of Kevin King, Mike Hughes, and Antonio Hamilton. And then they list the potential free agent or trade candidates as Akella Witherspoon, Xavier Howard, Adoree Jackson, and James Bradbury. And then on top of that, Gary Davenport of Bleacher Report wrote another article listing eight shocking trade proposals for the summer, in which he suggested Bradbury to the Jacksonville Jaguars as a potential move, saying, quote, Jaguars get James Bradbury, and the Eagles get a 2025 sixth round pick. And then he expands, saying, quote, Finding veteran cornerback help this late in the offseason isn't easy. Teams usually loat the part with even marginal talents at a position where depth can be hugely important. But as it happens, there's a former pro bowler who might just be available. The shock would be that a player who just two years ago was a second team all pro, who also has a pro bowl on his resume, would all but be given away. But perhaps a change of scenery would rekindle his career, and an improved Jaguar secondary would help their chances of keeping up with the Texans and their loaded cadre of pass catchers. So I definitely think that either Jacksonville or Atlanta could be good fits for Bradbury, and I'd definitely be curious to 
see if Howie could land a sixth rounder in a potential trade like the article said, or even something better. Now, the articles were just pure speculation and not actual reports, but they are interesting suggestions, so I'm curious to know your guys' thoughts down in the comments. What do you think of these potential suitors for JB, and what do you think the Eagles could get back in a trade? Or would you like him back on the roster next year? I mean, I personally wouldn't like him back just taking into account the amount of depth and young talent the Eagles have at the position, and also Bradbury's age and contract, along with just how bad he looked last year, as this play contributed to the Eagles' secondary and defense being absolutely terrible. And speaking of the poor defensive play last season, that's something that new Eagles defensive coordinator Vic Fangio is hoping to fix, as in a recent interview, he pretty much said that the defense was really bad last year, but he is happy with how they've looked so far this offseason, and he's hoping to fix all those issues this year. It feels great. You know, I grew up an Eagles fan many, many years ago. Uh, my pro coaching career started in Philadelphia 40 years ago, so hopefully I'll have a little run here and finish it in Philly too. Yeah, they weren't very good last year, and um, you know we have brought in some new players. Uh, we have some new coaches too, and uh, like the way the guys worked in the off-season work program, and I'm excited to get camp start and get going. And. Uh, Hopeful that will be a better defense. So I absolutely love what Fangio said, as not only did he speak facts and put it like it is when speaking on last year's defense, but he was also optimistic in talking about this coming season and what he hopes the defense is. So I personally think that with Vic as the defensive coordinator and all the new additions that they brought in this offseason, they should be a lot better. But what do you guys think? Now, speaking of those new additions in the offseason, the Eagles and Howie Roseman were also recently praised for the job that they did in improving their team, as ESPN recently gave the Eagles the highest offseason grade of any team in the NFL is they got an A with no other team receiving anything that high. And in the article, they even said, quote, their 2024 offseason set them up to be Super Bowl contenders once again, as they said of the coordinator changes, projected development of players, and many of the new additions for reasons as to why. So shout out to Howie Roseman for having yet another phenomenal offseason. And also going back to those new additions, one of them has the potential to completely take the offense to a whole new level. And of course, I'm talking about arguably the most notable addition of the offseason in running back Saquon Barkley. As of course, we all know how great of a player Barkley Barkley is and what he put on display during his time with the Giants, and while there are some concerns with Barkley, mainly his injury history, it's clear that he's an upgrade at the running back position from what the Eagles had last year and in years past, and if he is on the field for the Birds, he's going to be phenomenal, and he really can take this offense to a whole new level, like I said before, if he plays up to his potential and he's used correctly. Now, Jeffrey Knox of Inside the Eagles recently wrote an article where he listed Barkley as one of the big upgrades that the Birds should be happy with this offseason, and he detailed just what kind of effect Saquon could have on the offense saying, quote, we're probably spending too much time discussing Saquon Barkley's injury history and less time than necessary mentioning how massive this acquisition might be. Christian McCaffrey's addition to the 49ers roster helps San Francisco soar. Now, Philly may be flirting with a similar upgrade. What type of impact might Barkley have in this offense? His addition, now deemed legal, potentially represents the same level of powder keg. Now, this is a great point and one that has definitely been made before, but just really think about it. I mean, think about what Christian McCaffrey did for that 49ers offense when he arrived there back in 2022. I mean, it completely completely unlocked everything and made everyone around him better. And sure, we can argue about whether or not Saquon has it in him to be just as good as McCaffrey or not, but at the very least, we know that he's probably a top five back in the league when healthy, and that's without a talented offense around him and a bad offensive line with the Giants. So now he goes from having that to having one of the best offensive lines in the league and some incredible weapons around him. And he's going to draw a lot of attention from defenses, meaning that AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, and Dallas Goddard will all have more opportunities due to the fact that defenses have to play up more because of just how dangerous Saquon is and just the threat of him being on the field, not to mention the fact that that'll also help Jalen Hurts both passing the ball and also running it on design plays. And even Saquon himself is also going to be able to produce a lot on this offense, as he'll undoubtedly get a ton of touches, and behind the Eagles offensive line, as opposed to the Giants, it's going to make things so much easier on him. And in the same way that Barkley also opens up opportunities for the Eagles other weapons like AJ, Devontae, and Dallas Goddard, they're going to do the same for him as well. So overall, I think it's clear that if he stays healthy, then Saquon is about to completely transform this Eagles offense and make it so much better. But what do you guys think? Now, on top of that, things could get even better for the offense if Jalen Hurts is able to improve from last year, as even though he certainly wasn't bad last season, he definitely wasn't as good as he was in 2022, where he nearly won MVP and almost led the Eagles to a Super Bowl win. But with the Eagles implementing a new offense under Kellen Moore, it seems like Jalen is poised to bounce back and improve and maybe even be better than he was in 2022, with Garrett Podol of CBS Sports listing Hurts as one of the QBs most likely to improve this year, as he just said, quote, just two seasons seasons ago, Philadelphia Eagles quarterback Jalen Hurts finished as the 2022 NFL MVP runner-up, Super Bowl runner-up, and 2022 second team All-Pro quarterback. The 2023 season wasn't nearly as smooth for Hurts after the departure of offensive coordinator Shane Steichen, who left to become the head coach of the Indianapolis Colts. Hurts' turnovers total more than doubled in 
2023, while his passing yards per attempt declined by nearly an entire yard, from 8.0 to 7.2. For context, Baltimore Ravens quarterback Lamar Jackson ranked fourth in the NFL last season and averaged eight yards per pass attempt, while Hurts 7.2 yards per pass attempt ranked 14th in the league. With the addition of two-time Pro Bowl running back Saquon Barkley and experienced offensive coordinator Kellen Moore, Hurts should look more like the 2022 iteration of himself than last season's version. And really, I think this is the point that most Eagles fans have really been trying to get across all offseason when it comes to Hurts. I mean, first of all, his 2023 season wasn't even that horrible, but still, a lot of the reasons for his struggles was because of the coaching, the play calling, and the poor scheme, but now that we have a competent offensive coordinator calling the plays and scheming things up, things should look much better. So overall, I'm personally super excited to watch Shalen, Saquon, and the rest of the Eagles offense this year because it's going to be electric. I mean, things are looking up for everybody. AJ Brown says he's in the best shape of his life, and he looks poised to be even better next year. Smitty just got his new contract extension and now will be put into a system where his skill set is utilized correctly, and Dallas Goddard is out training with the league's best tight ends at tight end university. I mean, everyone, from the players to the coaches, seems so locked in for the season, and I just cannot wait to see what this offense ends up looking like. Now, I'm going to be continuing to cover the Eagles throughout the rest of the summer, heading into training camp, and then, of course, when the regular season starts. So, if you don't want to miss any of that, make sure you subscribe, and also, really, really importantly, turn on notifications so you're notified instantly when one of these videos is uploaded. And also, while you're at it, make sure you drop a like to show some support. Support, I'd greatly appreciate it and also leave a comment down below just regarding anything that I talked about in this video and if you want to watch another video going over five eagles that are pretty underrated but I think are going to have a big positive impact this season then you can check this out right here and now with all that being said that's pretty much all I got for this one guys so thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.